This is a cup. This cup represents time. The amount of time that fits within this cup cannot be changed. Everything that we must teach has to fit within this cup, right? Well, let's take a closer look at that assumption. Consider the life of a third grade teacher and what they're responsible for teaching within two popular curricula nowadays, the Common Core and the PYP. In the Common Core, a third grade teacher has 92 standards in English, language, arts, and literacy to teach throughout the year. In mathematics, there are 37 standards for a grand total of 129 standards. In the PYP, when looking at phase three of the framework's developmental continuum, the results are eerily similar. In language, there are 73 learning outcomes. And in mathematics, there are 56 learning outcomes for a grand total of 129 learning outcomes. That's right. Both the PYP and the Common Core each have almost 130 standards and outcomes to teach third graders in language and maths alone. This doesn't even consider the standards and outcomes in science, social studies, ICT, or personal, social, and physical education. We're starting to approach more standards and outcomes than there are school days in a year. And we haven't even begun to talk about how we teach yet. We've just taken a glimpse into what we teach. What about learning through inquiry and student-centered environments? What about independent research and peer collaboration? What about digital literacies and design thinking? Student voice, choice, and action. Valuing the creative and artistic process. Learning through play. And what about the time it actually takes students to learn and demonstrate understanding of these 130 plus standards and outcomes? All of this takes time. Not just a little, a lot. Enormous amounts of time. Where does all this fit? into a cup that's already filled. Trying to cram everything into a limited amount of time is like trying to cram a bunch of seeds into a tiny garden. If too many seeds are spread throughout a limited area, there'll be no space for anything to grow. If we give no space for seeds to grow, they'll suffocate themselves in competition for their limited resource. Learning and time are like this. If we give no space and time for learning to grow, the seeds that we are planting will not flower and come to fruition. As we move forward into the middle of the 21st century, the question we ask ourselves should not be, what are we going to be teaching 10, 20, or 30 years from now? Instead, it should be, what won't we? Rather than asking, what do our students need to know so they can become successful global citizens, we should be asking, what don't they? And rather than wondering, what's next in education, we should be asking, what's now dead in education? What do we take out? What gets cut? Asking what gets cut, what do we not need anymore, are the types of questions we should be discussing in schools. Yes, they are difficult. Yes, it will make people uncomfortable. And yes, there may be intellectual conflict. However, these questions shouldn't be passively avoided out of discomfort or insecurity. Time is a function of the what and the how. Adding more and more onto one or the other is an unsustainable model in modern learning environments. Something needs to be taken out. It's time we start these conversations in our own schools around what gets taken out so we can make room for the how and the why. We might not have the answers right away, but shying away from those questions and conversations will only lead to education's inevitable suffocation. Take back your cup. 
and only fill it when something has been taken out. Stand up and ask, what don't we teach? What won't we teach? What gets cut? Thank you.